Good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Antonio Yanakis, Dr. Brilakis, and uh, the entire committee for their invitation and for uh, the wonderful hospitality. As we discussed, uh, irreparable posterior superior rotator cuff tears are a challenging problem, particularly in younger patients with little to no glenohumeral arthritis. Um, as we have just discussed, latissimus dorsi tendon transfer has been most commonly used to reconstruct these irreparable cuff tears. More recently, the lower trapezius tendon has emerged as a more anatomic transfer with a couple of potential advantages over latissimus dorsi. First of all, uh, the origin of the lower trapezius, as shown in uh, red here, uh, is cranial to the latissimus dorsi and medial to the infraspinatus fossa of the scapula. Uh, it has a nearly identical line of pull as the infraspinatus seen here in green. Additionally, the lower trapezius and infraspinatus excursion and tendon forces are very similar, and a recent EMG study demonstrated a synergistic external rotation activation of the lower trapezius and the infraspinatus, thus they are in phase. Just as a brief uh, review of our anatomy, the trapezius muscle has three parts, the upper, middle, and lower. It functions to elevate, retract, and externally rotate the scapula. The insertion of the lower trapezius is on the uh, medial scapular spine, and its innervation is the spinal accessory nerve. The uh, lower trapezius tendon transfer was first performed in 2007 and described in the literature in 2009 by Dr. El Hassan at the Mayo Clinic uh, in Minnesota. It was performed for a 55-year-old man with a traumatic complete brachial plexus injury who lacked forward flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the shoulder. He actually transferred both the middle and lower trapezius with bone attachments uh, through an open procedure using Achilles tendon and dermal allograft. At nine months, the patient had no pain. Uh, he had improvements in forward flexion, abduction, and external rotation, both in range of motion and in strength. Uh, the patient experienced no scapular winging or scapular dyskinesia and had improvements in subjective shoulder value, constant score, and dash score. The patient was very satisfied and was able to return to swimming. Over the past several years, this technique has been refined, uh, first using smaller incisions instead of one large incision. With a more lateral incision, the posterior deltoid can be detached, uh, thus improving our exposure to the infraspinatus tendon. The indication was expanded uh, from brachial plexus injury to rotator cuff deficiency, and the lateral incision uh, was transferred uh, to a more superior location, and a chromial osteotomy was incorporated into, in order to improve the exposure of uh, the greater tuberosity. A further refinement in the technique has now been an arthroscopic assist, uh, assisted fixation of the allograft to the greater tuberosity, which avoids the need for a chromial osteotomy and avoids the need for a larger uh, lateral incision. There have been two biomechanical evaluations published in the literature, the first by Dr. El Hassan's group uh, at the Mayo Clinic, in which they found that the lower trapezius provided a more effective external rotation moment arm as compared to the latissimus dorsi. As we can see here in this graph, the lower trapezius in red uh, compared with the latissimus dorsi in blue, that in zero degrees of abduction um, and when attached to a superior position on the greater tuberosity, the lower trapezius had a better moment arm than did the latissimus dorsi. In 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, we see that the latissimus dorsi has a slightly better, but not statistically significant, better moment arm as compared to the lower trapezius, again, in green and in red, respectively. Uh, Dr. Omid at University of Southern California also uh, performed a biomechanical evaluation using a massive rotator cuff tear model, and his group found that the lower trapezius transfer was better than the latissimus dorsi uh, with regards to restoring uh, native glenohumeral kinematics and joint reaction forces at 0, 30, and 60 degrees of abduction. They concluded that the lower trapezius provides better centering force and restores compressive forces more effectively than the latissimus dorsi. 
Our current indications um, are patients with irreparable posterior superior rotator cuff tears who are younger, higher demand, and without significant glenohumeral arthritis. Other considerations uh, include good forward elevation, an intact teres minor, and good passive range of motion preoperatively. Contraindications include a chronic subscapularis deficiency, deltoid deficiency, an inability to comply with a rigorous rehabilitation protocol postoperatively, and a relative contraindication is physiologically advanced age. The uh, details of the technique will uh, be illustrated in uh, much uh, s further detail on Saturday during my uh, other presentation. But briefly, it is an arthroscopic assisted technique using Achilles tendon allograft with fixation uh, arthroscopically to the greater tuberosity, typically with four suture anchors, and then uh, fixation to the lower trapezius medially through a small incision. There have been some early results published in the literature. Uh, first in 2012, Dr. Hal Hassan's group uh, published uh, the results of 52 patients treated uh, for a bra uh, traumatic brachial plexus injury and a paralytic shoulder. At mean 19 months postoperatively, uh, external rotation had uh, improved, pain score had improved, DASH score and subjective shoulder value uh, were all improved. Further in 2014, uh, they uh, reported on 111 patients, again with paralytic shoulders uh, lacking external rotation, and uh, they noted external rotation improvement in more than 90% of patients. They reported complications including seroma in 10% of patients secondary to subcutaneous tunneling of the graft, postoperative pain in patients who had afferentation pain from the brachial plexus injury, as well as some skin irritation and soreness related to the brace that must be worn for six to eight weeks postoperatively. In terms of uh, patients with massive irreparable rotator cuff tears, um, Dr. Ellison's group again uh, reported on 33 patients with final follow-up of almost four years. 97% of patients had significant improvements uh, in pain, subjective shoulder value, and DASH score, and the mean improvements uh, preoperatively to postoperatively were forward flexion of 50 degrees, abduction 50 degrees, and external rotation 30 degrees. They also found that more significant range, range of motion gains were experienced in patients who had more than 60 degrees of preoperative forward flexion. Most recently, Dr. Valenti in 2018 uh, published on his experience with lower trapezius tendon transfer using semitendinosis autograft. Uh, in his 14 patients at twi uh, mean 24 months follow-up, he noted external rotation gains of 24 degrees with the arm at the side and 40 degrees with the shoulder and 90 degrees of abduction. Constant score, simple shoulder test, subjective shoulder value, and pain were all improved. He also found a resolution of the lag sign and horn blower sign in all patients. Complications included two hematomas and one revision for infection. So in conclusion, the lower trapezius is a more anatomic tendon transfer option that can be performed through an arthroscopically assisted technique uh, with good short-term results, albeit limited results in the literature, and is thus a promising treatment option for younger patients with massive irreparable posterior superior rotator cuff tears. Thank you very much, and I welcome any of you in Boston.